The turn two from Taiba is a control interface that integrates with your control system and allows you to operate your lights, your blinds, the temperature, and your audio. In this video, let's see how to choose the model that will fit your control system, how to put everything together, and how to set it up using the Taiba app. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's do it. Basically, the Turn 2 is a control interface that sits between a keypad and a touch panel. It goes in place where you will need a bit more control than what a regular keypad would offer, without going to the extent of using a full touch panel. It is very easy and pleasant, I would say, to use. You can swipe through its different screens to access different functions and operate it using the ring here. This device with a sleek and elegant design will fit very well in your living area, your kitchen, your master bedroom, or even your home office. So, how does it work? Well, you will have your control system from which you'd operate your lights, your blinds, the temperature, and the audio in your home or any other type of application. This could be a KNX, a Crestron, or even a Control 4 system. The Turn 2 will integrate with your control system so you can operate those four elements here directly from it. To do so, each control system will require its own type of Turn 2 driver to activate this integration. And you can find a list of drivers available with their links in the comment section below. Now, Check this out. Apart from colors and finishes, the Turn 2 is always the same, but you will have to choose the best connector to which it is mounted on to that matches the control system you want to integrate it with. As it is always recommended to use a wide communication between systems, this cable here will allow for both communication and power. So for a KNX system, you will use this KNX bus connector to wire the turn back to it. And for a Crestron system, you will use this Crestron bus connector here. Also, the Turn 2 has built-in wireless capabilities that you can use in case of a retrofit, for example, if you can't run a new cable to it. In this case, you will use this power DC bus connector for power only when integration is done wirelessly. Currently, you will have to use this power only plate for integration with Control 4, for example. And there will be some other type of bus connector coming soon, like an Ethernet one. So stay tuned. Good. And if you enjoyed the video so far, make sure to give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button and share it with your crowd, as this will help the channel to continue making those type of tutorials. Thank you very much. The turn two is great easy to read from its 2.1 inches backlit high definition display with toughened glass and anti fingerprint coating. It includes a motion sensor, so the turn wakes when you approach it. It also includes a temperature sensor. And with regards of wireless communication, it is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as iBeacon compatible which is great. Now, let's see the Taiba demo kit I've got for you here today. And here is my brand new Turn 2. It has a silver ring and black and bronze ring finishes are also available as standard. Premium alternatives are also available from high-end finishing partners, such as Focus SB, Meljack, and Wandsworth Electrical. Bear in mind, ring finish needs to be defined at the point of order. It is not something you can remove and replace later. Okay. At the back of the unit, we can find the connector that will make contact 
with the bus connector wired back to your control system once installed. And a USB connector that can be an option when the turn is used on a table stand, for example. And here is my bus connector. The one I'll be using here today is a power only bus connector, which, as we just say, is to be used in a wireless type of integration, right? This is where the turn will make contact with the bus connector. And here, the various fixing points. At the back, we have our power connector that can take between 5 and 36 volt DC. And all around the connector, a series of very strong magnets that will hold the turn in place. <laughs> okay. Today, I'll be mainly using this type of table stand to hold my turn too. It is a very sleek and solid piece. And of course, the turn tool can be wall mounted using this regular round back box or with a square UK back box using the Taiba wall plate. And finally, here is the 5 volt power supply recommended by Taiba that I will be using on my demo setup. Okay, so let's wire everything together. To fit my power supply cable through the table stand, I need to remove this plate underneath first. Next, I'm going to cut off my power supply connector and prepare my cables. And the one with the dotted line is the plus. Okay, so let's push this cable through and screw the bottom plate back. Okay. Let's first remove those two screws here. Then, I get my bus connector and remove that green connector at the back. Now, using a smaller screwdriver, I'll prepare my connector, fit my cable, and plug it back. Okay, so let's fit the bus connector on the table stand, and those bits here will hold the whole thing in place. Nice. Next, I just need to get my turn too. Et voila! Installation done! <laughs> now, let me plug the thing and let it load up. First, I'll have to install the Tiber app on my phone. And of course, you can find it on the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. I launch the app and add the device. Allow the app to find devices on my local network and allow Taiba to access camera on my phone to scan the QR code on the turn 2. Okay. Let's join the turn on wireless network to continue the setup. I'll name my turn to Adelux Studio. Now, I add the device to my own Wi-Fi network and enter my password. OK. And my turn to has now been added to my Tab app and I can complete its configuration. I click on Setup Now and let's go to Software here first to check if an update is available as my turn is brand new. OK, so I need to update it to the latest version. I click on Update Now and after a couple of minutes, I have my device up to date. Great. Next, on date and time, we need to check if we're on the right location. Here, we'll choose London. OK. Here, we can enable and disable the small LED on the turn so we can locate it when the display is sleeping. We can also enable and disable the clicker here. Oh, I love that clicker. <laughs> and same thing for the built-in motion detector. Good. Next, I can choose the timeout for when the display goes to sleep with various choices from 20 seconds to 5 minutes. 
and the type of screensaver I will want to use. Here, the options are none, digital, or analog clock. Then we have our Wi-Fi network details here, as we set them earlier. Next, connectivity, and in particular, the control bus section here, where we're going to select our communication method with our control system, making sure we use the appropriate bus connector, remember? Here, the options are none when using the power-only bus connector, in case of a wireless integration, like with Control 4, for example. Then, if we integrate with Crestron, using the Crestron bus connector, we can select Crestnet. And if we are on a KNX system, we will choose the KNX control bus. In our example here today, we know we got to leave it unknown. Okay. We also have the beacon connectivity set up here. We're just going to leave it off and we go back there on a separate tutorial. Okay, now we get to controls. So, let's enter the first section here, light. In light control, we can decide to show our lighting scenes from this toggle button here. And then add some scenes. Automatically, the app has added enough scene, which is good, as we always need to have access to enough from any point of control. First, let's add the all on scene, as well as the TV, relax, a nighttime scene that I have on my control system and would like to operate for my turn too. Okay. In the light section here, we can also add the control of individual lighting circuits directly from the turn. So, I'll add a circuit of down light that would again refer to a circuit set inside my control system. And I can even choose an icon for it. Then, a circuit of LED strip. Why not? Then, pendant and lamps. Voila! We can also decide here if we want all those circuits to have dimmable control from the turn or just an on off. Okay, so we're done. Back to the main screen. Next, let's configure the climate section. Show the temperature control. Select the source, internal or external. And we can set the range minimum and maximum, as well as the increment, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay, now let's configure fan speeds. So, typically here, we would have high, medium, low, and again, off has been included automatically. <laughs> again, based on your HVAC system, you can display humidity information back to the turn. And also, include climate mode, such as heating, cool, dry, eco, etc. with your choice of icon to be displayed. Finally, if your HVAC or control system allows you to get information service from the cloud about air quality, pressure, and humidity, those can also be displayed on the turn too. Great, I'm done. So I click on the tick here to go back to my turn settings menu. Next, I've got my shades. And if I have any shade scenes, which are basically blind preset positions, I can add those here. And I can also add my various shade groups, which I would like to control from this specific turn too, like my shears and Roman blinds, for example and I can select the icons I want to use for each. I can also specify if I need a basic open-close control from the turn, and this is what I will probably use if I operate basic AC blinds, for example, or position in case we use smart blinds that provide bidirectional communication with our control system. Great! And the last item I need to set up is media. Here is very straightforward. When we set to show media, this will give us the volume control. Again, on the selected source set on my control system. And if I want to allow the play, pause, next and back buttons, I will activate controls here. And that's it. I just finished to configure my tab at turn two. That was very easy. But before we leave this screen though, 
what I like to do is to rearrange those values items so I can access them on the turns display in the order that I want. Like for example, if I hold on to the lines here on my shades menu, I can slide it just behind my lights control here. Voila. And as you guessed it, I can also rearrange the content of those value sections as I'm doing here. And I can also rearrange the different settings within those menus to put in the top position the ones I wish to access first for everyday operation, for example. That is very convenient. We can also remove this turn from the app itself if needed, for whatever reason. And because our turn is set up, we will be able to find it again and re-add it to the app. However, if we reset the turn here, the config on the unit will be completely deleted and the turn back to default. So we really need to understand what we want to do here before using any of those buttons, I would say. Also, the very cool thing is that I can use the Taiba app to operate my turn as if I was manually using it. I can access my lights, blinds, temperature and media from those icons here at the bottom. I can set my lighting scenes as well as my lighting circuits, position my blinds, set up the temperature, the fans, select modes and control media. I can do everything the turn does, but from the app. And if my app and turn are showing the same screen at the same time, we can actually see that there is a live update between the two. That is very cool. <laughs> Voila, there you have it. Everything you need to know to start using the Taiba Turn 2. And if you want to know where to get the turn from, check out the links in the comment section below. I will follow up on the integration of the turn with various control system in future tutorials. So, make sure to subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel so you can be updated when those will be released. Thank you for watching and talk to you again on the next tutorial.